Hello, I'm Michelle Tapper with the latest from science. Artificial intelligence is being used around the world to help fight the COVID-19 pandemic. From medical and hospital care to tracing and testing, AI is being used across a broad range of fields. Here to tell us more about it is one of Australia's leading AI researchers and Academy Fellow, Professor Toby Walsh from UNSW Sydney and Data61. Thanks for joining us, Toby. My pleasure. As we know, the race is on to find a COVID-19 vaccine. How is artificial intelligence being used to help develop one? Oh, well, it's a good Australian success story. We're, there is already uh, a team at Flinders University that has a vaccine that was found with the help of an AI program that is uh, being tested on animals as we speak. They had um, a success last year with an influenza vaccine and they've they've twisted now and, and they've been looking at the COVID. Um, it's two aspects of AI. One is that, that uh, they use AI to work out what molecular structures might be able to uh, attack the, the virus. And then secondly, they use an AI program that tries then to, to work out a new uh, compound that will have those components. And then they go off and, in the lab and synthesize that. Tracing and tracking and maintaining physical distancing are all important tools in managing this pandemic. What AI tools are being used here and overseas to help fight the pandemic? So the very first uh, idea that we might might um, be suffering this pandemic came from an AI program. It was developed by a Canadian company called Blue Dot. And on December the 30th, nine days before who actually warned us that there was uh, this uh, pandemic about to start, they were monitoring uh, social media and the news wires, um, and they identified that there was an unusual outbreak of pneumonia happening in, in around the Wuhan region um, and sent out to their clients a, a warning report um, that was perhaps possibly the very first indication that we had. And so um, those sorts of tools um, certainly, I'm sure, will be used to see if they can spot any um, secondary outbreaks as we start to get on top of the virus. As restrictions are being eased, what artificial intelligence tools are being used to monitor outbreaks here and overseas? I should start by saying this is a little more controversial because uh, we have to be obviously very careful about uh, imposing on people's privacy. But again, there's a, a team in South Australia that's um, building drones and using computer vision to identify people who might be coughing in a crowd and also reading their temperature using thermal sensors. And therefore, you may be able to identify people who need to, to be uh, monitored. There are certainly a lot of um, in, interesting candidate Bluetooth tools being being developed around the world. You can get a, a bracelet now um, that will tell you if you've been close to someone else and you can use that to, to track and trace people um, like you can with the, the COVID Safe app as well. What sort of AI technology is being used to help medical professionals on the front line? There's a wide variety of uses of AI um, already with it on the front line to help deal um, with um, the COVID outbreak um, from helping the diagnosis. Um, they've, already, um, well, they've already developed some tools in China um, to scan x-rays um, to of, of people's lungs to identify the distinctive um, signs of, uh, of the beginnings of pneumonia in people's lungs and could do that uh, quicker, more accurately and cheaper than human doctors can do. Um, so starting with the di diagnosis and then moving on to the treatment, there are AI programs, machine learning programs that have been developed to identify those patients most at risk of having severe symptoms of, uh, of the coronavirus and those patients therefore needing um, the most care and attention. Um, and to, to, towards um, uh, then uh, the care of those patients, um, suggesting uh, AI programs that are being used to suggest um, the best courses of therapy um, for, those, for those people ending up sadly in ICUs. Is AI being used to help care for people that are contagious or perhaps give them medication so as not to infect medical staff? So there's been very limited use of robots within within hospitals. Um, there, there has been some trials of, of, of using robots so you can actually get um, keep doctors away from, from infected patients. Um, the most widely used um, robots in, in Australia in, in hospitals are those actually just dispensing drugs. 
uh, which is an interesting and challenging problem. There are a huge number of people who get given the wrong prescription mistakes. And so if you actually have a robot doing the dispensing, you can actually eliminate many of those mistakes. Um, but um, we will see robots being used increasingly um, in a care setting and in also not just in hospitals, but also in, in aged care. Um, but um, th that comes with its own challenges. I mean, uh, in terms of, of whether we'll actually um, uh, remove humans and the, and the caring touch that humans provide to, to, to people. But equally, that has to be balanced um, with keeping uh, healthcare professions, pet professionals away from, from dangerous situations. There's loads of information coming in about this pandemic from every minute of every day from all around the world. How is artificial intelligence helping sort through all that information? I think this is a really good example of how AI is going to change the way that we do science. Um, the in, research into COVID is, is one of the most active areas of research that we see today, um, and papers are being published around the world. It's actually hard to keep on top of the literature. Um, and so there's been a, a big database um, collected together of all the publications in this area, um, and researchers are starting to use AI tools, data mining tools, um, to help mine that data to actually try and work out the, the wood from the trees um, and see if there are interesting ideas that we can find. Because it's almost impossible to, to keep up and read the papers, let alone do the research on the topic. And so we're using increasingly AI tools to help us keep on top of the scientific literature, in particular on top of the COVID literature. Um, but we'll see that in, in, in many other areas moving forward to, to keep a cop, top of the literature of cancer or whatever. Um, it's almost impossible. You could spend your whole day just reading papers. Um, and so increasingly, AI is going to be um, uh, is going to help us speed up the way that we do science, the, the speed that we can do science. How do you think AI research will change or improve as a result of this pandemic? Uh, there's two ways in which which AI I think is going to uh, change as a result of, of this. Uh, first, first of all, uh, there's the big economic disruption that's happening to our lives, um, and as a response, we come out of this, um, and as businesses um, start to transform themselves into the new economic environment, increasingly they're going to turn to tools like artificial intelligence and automation to to help them become more economic and more viable. Um, and secondly. Um, uh, more specifically, uh, we're going to see AI being increasingly used within medicine and healthcare. We see this with, with COVID, but we're going to see this in many other areas that uh, increasingly AI, one of the good applications, one of the best applications, one of the most promising applications for AI will be to actually help us uh, understand uh, our biology, understand um, how healthcare, um, and improve the quality uh, of that. Um, and in, in an age in which healthcare is ever increasingly expensive, it, it's good to be able to have technologies like this coming along that will allow, allow us to, to offer better and better healthcare to more and more people. These tools can help us more efficiently, more effectively, more cheaply track and trace when people have had the misfortune to have, have caught the virus. But the best cure to, to the problem is not for people to get infected. And the only way we can stop them being infected today, absence of a vaccine, is social distancing. Some great points there about artificial intelligence, and no doubt it's an important tool to help us manage and get through this pandemic. Thanks so much for your time today, Professor Toby Walsh. <laughs> it's been my pleasure. And don't forget, for regular video updates from the Australian Academy of Science, make sure to follow us on social media. I'm Michelle Tapper. See you soon.